Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the ventilator alarms. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. I know you guys have a confusion on what to do especially in solving alarm system of your ventilator. And ventilator alarms are really annoying, right? And we cannot avoid that in the examinations, ventilator alarms are always there being asked. Whether it's just a nursing examination in your school or it's a board examinations. So before we're going to proceed on how to solve ventilator alarms, let's discuss mechanical ventilator. And mechanical ventilator is a medical term actually for an artificial ventilator and it is indicated when patient's spontaneous breathing is already inadequate to maintain life. So they are designed to move breathable air into and outside the lungs. They also aid patients who are physically unable to breathe or there is a breathing insufficiency. The mechanical means here in the mechanical ventilator is that they are used to assist or replace spontaneous breathing. So if we say mechanical ventilator, it is already invasive, which involves instruments to be used in order to save the patient's airway or in order to save the patient's life. There are different kinds actually of ventilator machine. They can be portable or they can be big machines. And while we are caring for our patients, I know that you are sometimes annoyed with the bit of that ventilator machines. So let's discuss the types of alarm in mechanical ventilator. We have two types. These are high pressure alarms and low pressure alarms. We cannot actually avoid the alarm of this mechanical ventilator because they are already there constantly provided. So if we don't have alarm to the patient, we are actually depriving the patient's safety because putting an alarm in a ventilator will help us solve any issues that may signal us that the patient needs help. So setting an alarm to the mechanical ventilator will help us to do our task for our patients. Actually, they are the guides, okay? So don't be annoyed if you can hear beeping in your mechanical ventilator. If we say high pressure alarms, these are the causes. Number one, there may be an increased secretion. Two, there is wheezing or bronchospasm. Number three, there is an endotracheal displacement. The patient may cough gag or bite the ET tube and lastly the patient may be fighting with the mechanical ventilator so if you can see here in the high pressure alarms they are triggered by obstruction increased secretions if there is increased secretions in the ET tube there is obstruction right the air cannot actually flow because of the presence of the secretions the next one is wheezing or bronchospasm so what happened to the patient's airway it's constricting causing obstruction another one is endotracheal displacement if we say endotracheal displacement maybe you move the patient causing an obstruction or maybe the tube was kink okay the next one patient cough, gag, or bite. Of course, if they do it, there is already kinking of the tube, causing obstruction. And the lastly, patient is fighting with the mechanical ventilator. If they are actually fighting with the mechanical ventilator, they will exert some energy. So if you're going to exert some energy, you are constricting your airway. Therefore, we are speaking about obstruction. So if we say high pressure alarms, the causes actually resulted to obstruction. So whatever that caused the high pressure pressure alarms expect that there is an obstruction in the ET tube or in the patient's airway. Clear? So in high pressure alarms, they are always triggered by increased resistance to airflow. Remember the obstruction? So what are you going to do? Look for obstruction. If you have a problem right now, you need to look for a solution. Okay? So you need to look for the cause of obstruction. Here in the high pressure alarms, our nursing interventions, when we hear a high pressure alarm and we know that there is obstruction, first is that we need to check the root cause of that obstruction. So if there is a kink tubing, our solution is to unkink the tube, of course. Next one is that if there is a condensed water in the dependent tube, remove it or empty the tube. The next one is mucus plug, like if the patient is having increased secretions the thing that we are going to do before the suction is that ask the patient to turn if the patient is obeying commands do coughing do deep breathing or suction 
on as needed basis. Don't forget that if you are doing suctioning, do not do it every 15 minutes or whatever. Do it on as needed basis. First, before you suction, the thing that you are going to do is to assess for the patient's vital signs, especially for their auto saturation, okay? And before you are going to do the suctioning, make sure that you are doing hyperventilation to the patient first. Bag the patient, deliver a high flow first to the patient before you will do suctioning. So these are the nursing interventions that we can do to our patient if there is high pressure alarms. Since we discussed this one, let's discuss the step-by-step -step processes in fixing high pressure alarms. First, if there is obstruction, check for the obstruction cause and if there is any kinking, unkink the tube. Do not forget this one. If you saw that the tube is kink, unkink it. If you saw that there is water in the tubing, remove it. And turn first the patient, do coughing and dip breathing if the patient is obeying before doing the suctioning. Note that doing suctioning will only be the last resort. And check always for the patient's vital signs, especially your autosaturation. Now let's proceed to the low pressure alarms. This can be caused by decreased in resistance, okay? So if in high pressure alarms earlier, it is triggered by increased resistance to airflow, here in low pressure alarms, they are always triggered by decreased in resistance, okay? So here, decreased, which can be caused by disconnection. That can be main tubing disconnection or the autosensor tube disconnection. So as mentioned earlier, look for any problem, always check for the cause. Check for for the patient first. Maybe if there is already a low pressure alarm, the patient may stop spontaneous breathing. In both cases, here in the main tubing disconnection and in auto sensor tube disconnection, check the patient, then reconnect the tubings. And of course, you need to call for the respiratory therapist to fix the issue. Okay, clear? First, if there is a low pressure alarm, what are you going to see? Check first the patient. Is it really disconnected or not? Maybe if it's not disconnected, the patient already stopped from breathing. Okay? Okay? But if it's disconnected, the thing that you are going to do is to connect it and call for the RT. Okay? I have a question. What if there is a low pressure alarm and you are in the nurse's station? You heard that there's a low pressure alarm, so you went to the patient's room. However, when you went there already, you saw that the tubing is already on the floor. What are you going to do? First is bag the patient manually. Do not reconnect it. Why? Because the tubing is on the floor, okay? There might be an ascending infection that will happen if you're going to reconnect it, okay? So what are you going to do? Get your bag valve mask, bag the patient, and ask for help in order for them to call for the RT to change the tubing, okay? Do not reconnect it because that tube is found on the floor. There will be an ascending infection which may cause ventilator-associated pneumonia, okay? So to give you a brief summary, when ventilator may be set too high or too low, first check the patient if there is alarm. If the setting is too high, patient is actually overventilating. And you can see in the ABG analysis that there is respiratory alkalosis. But if the setting is too low, you can see that the patient is underventilating. And you can verify it in the ABG analysis as respiratory acidosis. Guys, if you have any problem or any difficulties, on how to analyze ABG analysis. I do already have a video on that. So check this video. They might help you. And check the playlist also of ABG analysis concepts and reviews on this channel. They might also help you. Okay? So if the setting is too high, the patient may be overventilating and the patient may suffer from respiratory alkalosis. What did we say in respiratory alkalosis? Everything is high. So the patient may also be having hyperexcitability. Okay? You can check it or verify it through their vital signs and other symptoms. Check this video. While if the setting is too low, the patient may be underventilating and they might be having respiratory acidosis. Question, what if you are the nurse in the night shift and the physician called you because he wants to wean off the patient out of ventilator in the morning? However, at 6 a.m., the ABG analysis say that the patient is respiratory acidosis. So what are you going to do? Are you going to agree with the physician? Are you going to disconnect the patient right away or what? 
First is you need to notify the physician that the patient is not yet ready to be weaned off. Okay, why? Because of the respiratory acidosis. So if the patient is respiratory acidosis, take note that they are under ventilating, so they still need the mechanical ventilator, okay? They are not yet ready to be weaned off the ventilator. While if the patient is already respiratory alkalosis, they are already over ventilating, and of course, if they are already respiratory alkalosis and over ventilating, you can notify the physician that the patient is already ready for weaning off out of the ventilator, okay? In carrying patients with mechanical ventilator, do not forget that once you hear the alarm already from the ventilator, always assess the patient first before the ventilator. Patient first, not the machine. Okay, remember this one. Check the patient because you can see what is really happening if you're going to prioritize your patient. And as I've mentioned earlier, the alarms will just guide you on what are the necessary interventions that you are going to do with your patient. Okay? So what are our nursing interventions when we are caring for a patient with a mechanical ventilator? Do not forget this mnemonic, a mech vent, okay? A mech vent. First is that we need to assess for the patient's response, vital signs, and lung sound. Check for the patient's breathing pattern because the client will never breathe at a rate lower than the rate set on the ventilator. We're going to discuss the modes of ventilator on the next videos. Letter M is to monitor for the patient's skin. Be aware that if patient is already having pale lips and nail bed, there is already a problem in their oxygenation. Next one is expansion of the chest. If the patient is on mechanical ventilator, assess bilaterally and there should be a symmetrical expansion of the chest, okay? Next one is correct the problem as soon as possible. If you found out that there is already an increased mucus on the patient, do not forget to suction. But first, as I've mentioned earlier, checks for the patient's oxygenation level, hyperventilate the patient before suctioning, and do the suctioning on a needed basis only. H is the hemodynamic status. Always refer to your ABG analysis so that you can give the proper treatment to the patient while they are having mechanical ventilator. Next one is letter V, adjust the ventilator setting according to the needs. So letter B here is ventilator. You need to adjust it according to the needs of the patient based from your hemodynamic status, which is the ABG analysis. The next one is ensure alarms are set. As I've mentioned earlier, the alarms will be your guide in caring for your patient. So do not ever forget to put that in your setting and do not turn it off, okay? And is that if the cause of the alarm is not determined, do manual bagging until the problem is already resolved. If you don't know the cause, better to do bagging until the problem is already solved. And lastly, tubing setup. Empty the tubing when there is moisture. As we've mentioned earlier, condensed water in the dependent tube should be emptied. Okay? So I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you had a knowledge already on how are you going to solve your ventilator alarm problems. If you need some help in nursing examinations, you can check the other videos that I have on this channel. And of course, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.